TV. I'm with the Gunter Shelley Ackham. How are you today, say? It's all going awesome here at the Arnold's Classic. Every it's each year a great day to be here, so it's awesome. Well, glad to have you here. Right, Gunter, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about yourself, yeah. your achievements in the past, and still you, you're achieving a lot of stuff. Tell us about yourself for the people who don't know you. Lots of people know you, lots of people look up to you. So tell us about yourself. Okay, yeah, actually I was born in Germany, you know, 1970, I'm 43 years old. I think my biggest achievement was actually winning at an early age already the Junior World Championship, two years later the Men's Heavyweight European Champion. A year later I was Mr. Universe, at 23 I turned pro, uh, uh, competed on a professional level till 36. Uh, for me it was time because I at an early age already had so much success and I started very early being on the pro level. So for me I decided okay I had to move on to something else and uh, I think my biggest achievement was winning the pro world champion at the uh, GNC show of strength where I beat Ronnie Coleman. Uh, he was uh, you know, the ranked Mr. Olympia and I think my biggest achievement for me personal was uh, when I had the biggest achievement at the Olympia in 2002 when I got a standing ovation from all of the people in the audience it was just a fire that came out I got goose gums from my toes to my head because I mean everybody thought I, I, I was the best guy on stage and for me that the crowd got up and, and were firing so hard that I had to actually come out and come and down and said hey it's okay I'm happy with it how things are so and uh, you know I think that's I still if I think about my biggest achievement that's really the moment in my life so and you know what it was all worth worth waiting for and uh, that's actually was worth all doing it all the hard work over the years and you know, already as a 16 year old going to the gym yeah uh, Gunter, you mentioned about you know you beat Ronnie Coleman okay obviously you train really hard okay how was your training how often did you train to get to that level to stand on that stage and be happy to win the Mestre Olympia. How, yeah. how was your training? How was your level of training was? Uh, you know what, it's like you probably heard it before, bodybuilding is a lifestyle. You live bodybuilding. It's not bodybuilding is part of your life. Bodybuilding is your lifestyle. So that means uh, proper nutrition, hard workouts, sometimes twice a day. Um, you have to get enough rest. You know, I always say you have to balance your life. I always try to say that people not today not everybody can do that but I said you should have eight hours sleep should eight hours work and do eight hours for yourself uh, then you have 24 hours a day so obviously it's not always working out like that but I it comes really down to that you have to live the sport you know you cannot go party a lot and all this stuff because you know your body functions right you have to want your body needs to run like a machine constantly it needs to be oiled you know it needs to have the proper fuel to run uh, run good and also make progress and you do that only when you sleep that's when your body releases growth hormone people go when they think you go in the gym and you work out that's when it's happening no it happens actually when you go and have rest and you feed your muscle with the nutrients that the body can repair the torn muscle and build it up and uh, there are sometimes where people get it wrong so actually part of this is really the nutrition proper proper nutrition and uh, good proteins quality food yeah but Go on to just give you the best advice. Go on, go on to, you know, you mentioned you trained very hard. You know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there weren't as much nutrition, as much supplements, okay? Yeah. What was your main supplements you were taking to help you to achieve your goal? Because these days, there's a lot out there. The people are spoiled, okay? Yes, yes. So what do you think they should take? And what was you yourself taking those days? You know what, I, to be honest, my main supplements, uh, it's very simple and people probably won't believe it. Whey protein, glutamine. Wow. So I love at the time, At the time, that was like for me, and obviously, you know, you always kicked in multivitamins because I think uh, on a high level when you train like this, um, you know, there were little ads like glucosamine for your joints. And I do, did that all over my years because if you train hard, you need to somewhat rebuild your cartilage, especially if you do the heavy weights and all this stuff. Um, but the main thing, my focus, the first thing I started with is really the whey protein. It was the first thing because you, you have to have a good quality protein that your body actually can use the amino acids to build it. And sometimes the most, uh, in my opinion, the best combination of protein is the whey protein. Yeah. Whey protein and glutamine. Yeah, so if I, yeah, glutamine, of course, immune system, you know, 
But uh, you know, and then later on, obviously, they came. That's when it happened. That Crea team came out. That's when I was already in a, almost like a, in one my pre, mid pro career, when all the other things start to coming up. All of a sudden, it was Crea team and all these things. You know, yeah, they add a little bit, but also, I, but to me, the main things I think the difference over all these years was probably simple: the protein and the glutamine. Yeah. So basically, whey protein and glutamine for yeah. basic start. All right, I'm going to ask you about Dennis Wall. Yes. Okay, I know he's a German guy. What do you think he's doing? He's done in Olympia just recently. What do you think his achievement was? He's done really good. Oh, oh of course he done awesome. I actually, to, I don't know. I, I, I just think it, I had him already higher, and uh, I think uh, you know I, I, I have to say, he, he is like what I admire about him too is actually. He still is working hard at it. He actually had his best year. I think it was this year, in my opinion. But also, you know, I thought he could have been last year winning the Arnold's Classic. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I don't understand a lot of the judging and I, why, uh, I don't understand why they wouldn't have given it to him. There was no reason. He was a better athlete on stage that day and that's what it comes down to. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make you... Here's the thing. It comes all the way down. If you, that day, you can be run at one point the fastest time. But when the Olympics are on, right, and you run the 100 meters not at your fastest, you're not the fastest. You're not winning. So the thing is, he was on there and when other people are not on, but you know, he's like, because they have a whatever comeback or something like that, they shouldn't win. If the condition is not there, it's not there. You know, and there were similar things, you know, sometimes even Miss Ronnie, yeah, yeah, he's Mr. Olympia. People say, oh yeah, you have to knock him out. He wasn't as good as Olympia. He just wasn't, you know, he still won. So I beat him three weeks later. That year, it wasn't his best year, but somehow you have to accept it sometimes. You have good years and bad years. I had the same. I came, I came in sometimes uncontrollable good. And then the other times, bam, in the last couple of days, you cheat, you did a mistake, whatever. And then you didn't look as good as you expected. And these things can happen. But then again, if somebody, you know, everybody prepares hard, you know, and I bet he's preparing hard as everybody else. And I think he sometimes deserves to be even a place higher. And it makes a big difference. If you're third or second, is a big difference. It's a lot of money involved. And also, if you win the Arnold's Classic or you're second at Arnold's Classic, it's a big difference. And I, I, I think that needs to go that way, you know. Um, how can you, you need to be objective, objective at these things and you have to look at it with a clear vision. And That's true, yeah. That is my opinion. So I think, I actually think he could have done even better than I, you know. Well, Gunter, you achieved a lot. You achieved a lot. I've got two more questions because I know people waiting, you know, you need an autograph. Two more questions. One question about yourself as a family person. How hard is it for you to travel all around the world, okay? It's not easy. No. Okay. How do you train? How do you train and keep this good condition when you travel to Spain, United States, Germany, everywhere, you know, everywhere on the road? How do, how, how do you, what's your secret? <laughs> My secret? You have to understand, I used to be in off season 330 pounds, and the highest was 337 pounds. It's uh, roughly 155, 158 kilograms. Wow. So I competed at 138 kilograms on stage. And uh, so I'm now way less yeah, you know condition. yeah but the thing is actually you know you get away with certain things my nutrition is not perfect and uh, my training is not perfect especially having a three-year-old and through my job when I'm home I had time a lot because my wife and I building a business but it's her idea so she has to put the idea on a paper and so we are we're having actually opening up a, a new business wow. in uh, in December so, but in the meantime, when she was working on that, I actually took care. I had to, had to, was fortunate enough to have a lot of time with my son, and I loved every day of it. And the thing is, you know, you sometimes cannot quite work out and have your food because, you know, little kids they are all over the place. Yeah, sweet. And if you just want to get going, sometimes it just you, you can't get out of the house. You have to take care of that. And he's like, he, you know, he makes issues and stuff. So now slowly actually I'm becoming and more consistent with my workouts even though traveling. You find a gym everywhere. That's a great thing about this world today that you can actually go in every hotel. You find a treadmill, you find some dumbbells, you find a little pull or something. And that is a good thing. So you find little things and, and I'm not really as intense anymore so I can get away with lighter workouts and just maintaining. So um, obviously I used to have, have a big muscle so when, when my yeah. nutrition is not perfect my muscles still eating up all the calories. So if I, 
you know, I don't have to dial it in exactly as I used to because my body is still eating up a lot. I mean, just standing here, I'm burning 3,800 yeah, right. calories. <laughs> and you know, it's like, obviously not everybody does that here because you have a certain muscle mass. But it also took a long time to get there, you know. Yeah. Any, any motivation, any advice for the youngsters out there? They're looking up to you as a very professional bodybuilder, as a, as a legend, one of the legends, okay, out there. Any advice for the Polish viewer because they love bodybuilding, they, they love sport. Anything you could think, any kind of secret you think you could think, give it to them. Just by the way. Okay, here's the thing. Um, when I went over to America, or even when I was uh, 16 years old, all my friends were going or say, hey, we go party, this and this. As a 16 year old, I stopped doing everything I did and I was focused already. And you know, all my friends said, it will never happen. You can't do it, you can't do it. For me, that was motivation. Never let you tell you you can't do it. When I went to America, everybody in Germany was waiting for me. Three months, after three months, I said, I will be back. It will never be happening. People just didn't trust I had it. So, and, uh, and sometimes it takes only one person who goes and believes in you. And that was for me, I had a mentor, Walter Clark. He said, Gunther, you know, and I had my up and down because I had a rough start. I had to sleep in a factory building with dog shit all over the place. I wasn't legal, so I hadn't had a lot of money and it was really rough. And the thing is, you know, and you were really, it couldn't get any deeper. So, and, and uh, people were just waiting for me to get back that I would fail. And you know what? And he said, look, you already came far. I said, you really want to make this now on, on this hard time? I say, stick it out. After every downhill comes an uphill. And the thing is, never let you tell anybody you can't do this. Every, you can do everything. Just follow your dream and put your effort in there. That is really it. You know what? Yes, yeah, sometimes you might not go all the way where you want to be, but at least from here to there is already a different. Even if you don't get all the way there, but if you shoot for that all the way up there, shoot high, at least on that ladder somewhere, you will add up and you come as close as you can get. Even if you don't achieve your, your, your end goal or your dream, but you come close to it. Instead of just standing there and saying no, because you don't know. You never know if it will happen or not. So and I say, like, I say, like I said, I had a lot of people telling me no, and I was the one, and my mentor said yes, and you know what, here I am, yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad you achieved a lot. Guys, trust me, I. I just had a goosebump this gun to what this what he was saying to me and to you guys. If you listen to what he says, honestly, you will reach your goal because this guy had a hard time, still is a legend. So I'm absolutely grateful to have you today. Thanks ever so much and good to have you. Yeah, thank you very much, man. It was a yeah. pleasure.